So it looks like spreading oneself out thinly does not work out well. At least on the maps we saw. But maybe it will on Act Natural, which is our last map for this series. Crown Amber in the bottom left corner. Once again, Grekim. Ferret are also Grekim. And this map we've seen a few times, actually very recently. Because J Raccoon's matches before the semifinals were on this map. Jericho Raccoon versus Ferreter. And in case you guys didn't see those, basically this map is 256 by 256. It's a smaller map, but the corner starts and the single entrance to the main base mean that it's a lot harder to do all-in rushes on. Though occasionally you see proxies happening around here and around here. The natural expansion here is actually fairly unsafe, but with the proper protection it can work pretty well. Most players will go for the northwest and southeast expansions because they're a lot easier to defend and a lot further out of the way. Or sometimes these expansions over here, because those are also surprisingly somewhat out of the way. Though they are difficult to defend if your opponent knows they're there. So this map will likely see more economic play, just because the size of the map, or the, rather the position of the expansion, or the main bases, and the fact that there aren't a lot of entrances to the main base. So I don't expect there to be a lot of tricky plays, or a lot of all-ins. It'll be a mid-game focused game, in all likelihood. I mean, there is a small chance that one of the players might just try to go for it. Like I said, Crown Aberrant can kind of go for it, since so he still has another best of three in case he loses this. But Ferreter really cannot risk anything. So Ferreter is going to be playing very conservatively if he's if he knows what he's doing. He probably does. Crown Aberrant very quickly getting a reef up to the front. So signaling he's probably going to go in for this expansion in a hurry. And since Crown Aberrant has been playing very economic this entire match, all... The first two games, he was playing heavily economic. Very few units, mostly just focusing on getting as many resource processors as possible. Ferret, on the other hand, has gone usually for earlier tech, but not so much economy. And on this map, economic spread can work okay if you only spread to the southwest, or southeast and northwest. Since southwest being the opponent's main, that's a bad place to expand to. But Crown Number, yeah, he's very quickly getting RPs in this natural expansion. The Reef here for healing, but that's about it. Not even an early Octopod. So relying on Ferreter not going for an all-in. Which, like I said, is pretty reliable. Because Ferreter, if he went for an all-in, could very easily lose the entire tournament in one go. And this is the finals. Why would he want to do that? He wants to be secure. Wants to play this safe. Because he needs to win this game and then two more in order to win the entire tournament. So he's not going to be throwing it away quite yet. And Faro setting himself up for... The duo, it looks like the other Seppi will likely set itself up as well. So Crown Armor protecting this natural expansion pretty well with the tank Arcticus as well. Ferreter will be able to spot what's going on before he even gets a chance to actually do anything about this, though. Ferreter doesn't have any QP. He can't build up an Octobot for an early assault or anything. But he does know what's going on. He does see the Triad has been partially moved away. Not sure if he's aware of... I don't think he's aware of this natural, but he will be soon. That Octo is moving in a position to scout. His own main base has not been scouted out yet. Crown Aberrant not aware of what's going on. But Ferreter definitely aware that there is an expansion here. Crown Aberrant has very quickly spread himself out. And that will be huge. Once he gets his QPRP, I'm not sure why he hasn't built that yet. I think it might have been something he's forgetting or not paying much attention to. But once he builds that, he will be able to very quickly get himself... There we go, getting that RP and QP. He will, will be able to get himself an Octopod, which could help Crown Aberrant. Getting his duo set up now at the natural expansion, which is still kind of insecure. Even the reef here is still going to be a little while before he gets other Seppi. He's going to need to get an Octo, use that as part of the progenerating set, and then from there get more reefs with the Seppis. While Ferreter, on the other hand, will be able to very quickly get an Octopod, and from that will be able to get himself a nice Assault Force. If he goes in quickly for the attack, he actually might be able to without risking his economy too much damage Crown Aberrant heavily. But he has to do so quickly. Crown Aberrant at the two minute mark, building up an Octo likely to build more Seppis from. Possibly for expansion, but probably for more Seppis. And will be building an Octopod very soon as well. He has a, his RP on QP, so this will be tricky. But Ferreter, he might be going for it. I think he is going for it. Crown Aberrant does not have, at the timing that Ferreter does have an Octopod, Crown Aberrant hasn't built one yet, and he doesn't have the resources for it quite yet, but I think he will by the time the Octopod's up and inside Crown Aberrant's main. However, Crown Aberrant building that Octo could slow things down. If Crown Aberrant waits and waits just to build an Octopod, then he'll be fine. But if he goes to that early Octo, then that'll be very difficult. If Ferreter goes for a quick attack, I think Ferreter building an Octopod and then an Octo will just be patrolling around his base, not going for a very quick assault. 
in, the, in which case I don't see this working out very well for Ferreter, and in which case Karnamrit would probably be just building up a duo from here. And no, he's sending an Octopod. He's sending an Octopod up? Is he going for an expansion? I think he might be. He's going for patrols at least. Double checking, make sure that nothing is coming up that will be hitting him in the unplayable past edge. Good idea. But it still means he's falling a bit behind in economy. He doesn't have, not economy, sorry, in units, in military. And this Octopod is being used for patrol. It is not going for an attack, so Ferreter not taking advantage of the timing he has and the position that Kronabrin is in. He could, like I said, he could, he could win from this point. Kronabrin has not built that Octopod. He does not even have anywhere from which to build the Octopod. So he doesn't have anything to work with right now. Really, what he needs to do is, or what he could, should have done, it's too late now, it's in the unplayable pass now, but should have gone for it before the Octopod got built. Probably would have been able to clear the map in that time and just take out the duo. But at this point, Cryabrin has his defenses laid out. He's fine. He won't be able to get attacked. Ferritor cannot do anything at this point. It was It's a very tight timing, but it, it could have been done. It could have worked. However, Ferritor also getting his reef, so both players will be going for the mid game. The one early game timing having been passed, there is not much left to do other than get Arians and just go for the mid game. However, neither player seems to be focusing heavily on bubble wrap. I think both players are thinking to do it reactively, getting the seppies they need if they get assaulted, but neither player going for the attack, which means they're both going to be likely going for very quick economy, and we'll be seeing within the next minute or so advanced structures, then spire, then a large air army flying around the map for both players, which might happen. No, Faraday is going for early for his reefs. He's going for standard bubble wrap. But Cryamert is not. Cryamert is being very greedy, which in this case is the right course of action since Faraday is not going for an assault anytime soon. And is actually spending a lot of money on reefs, which is they are not cheap. I mean the Sebi the reef itself is fairly cheap, but the Sebi is 45 LC. And so all those reefs, that's 90 LC he could have been spending on other things. And Cryamert getting himself a reef as well, probably getting himself a full bubble wrap. And is this a Sebi? It is. So yes, he is getting a full bubble wrap. Both players going for the three reef strategy, neither player wanting to be risky at all. And it looks like Ferreter is ahead in economy, actually. He has, yeah, he has 6 LC, 2 QP. He is, despite Cryamert's early expansion attempts, he's behind. Cryamert's actually behind in economy. Ferreter's, if he can take advantage of this, he can win this outright pretty easily. It'll take about five minutes to do, but he should be able to with enough tech and enough units overall just win this out. And he is getting tech, he is getting advanced structures. Karnamrit, on the other hand, about half a minute down from there. Getting more Reese, getting his LC RP set up, but not a lot of QP RPs. Is he setting up another... I think he might be setting up this... stepping to another Reef, actually. I'm not sure why he'd do that. So, if he does that, I would be kind of surprised, but... Sorry, this is the third Reef. The fourth Seppi here is the one I'm curious about. If that one's going to become a Reef... Because if that does, then he's going to be falling even further behind. So I think Kron Aberrant will have a bit of a harder time in this game than he did in the last one. Because Ferreter now basically taking Kron Aberrant's strategy to heart. And Kron Aberrant keeping... Attempting that map control spread he did last time, or not last time, on Rooftop Showdown. Which did not work out very well. Setting a try towards main base though. Okay, so he is setting up a duo here. So you'll have two duos, but not really that causally independent. And Ferreter, setting up a scouting Octo, will be able to see what's going on, see what Prime has built up thus far, and he's actually a couple minutes down from here. This Octo having just been sent, well, having been sent around the, the five minute mark, but now paying off the eight minute. And seeing everything, Ferreter knows exactly what's going on, and should point out he is using the future for scouting, or near future for scouting, so good to see that. Double checking at the main base, see what's in there, and he doesn't see anything yet, but that's kind of false. Cronamorant is building up in this base, but he just hasn't done so quite yet. And building up yet another reef. I think this is a little excessive. I realize he is trying to defend this base, but three reefs on its own, that's getting quite a lot, and Ferritor already has a spire. He could easily get Sebi Pods. He's probably going to do so, though. Faropods would be a better strategy right now, but it, right now he's going for Sebi Pods. Faropods, however, like I said, he would be better because Cronamorant does not have advanced structures yet. And he isn't going to be getting it well, until still after Ferreter has done so. And Ferreter is going for more QP RPs. He is definitely focused on QP production, so he's going to be able to get air faster, probably get a Faropod faster. Though the timing appears to be gone. Cronaver getting advanced structures when he does. He is getting Spire as well, so he will be able to... Hmm. Yeah, with the Spire here, and ignore this defeated, it's just an odd bug because this area got way it got propagated. 
but without that, if he has a spar built up, he will be able to build Sebi Pods on reaction to get rid of the Faro Pods that might be coming in. But no, Sebi Pods are coming in from Ferreter. If Ferreter can just build some more of those, get himself solidly around the map, scouting out with the Sebi Pod, not a bad idea. But if he gets Faro Pods and then Sebi Pod combined force army, then I think I think Cronamert will have lost. Cronamert, however, getting more QPRPs, and that will be at least a decently secure position from which to build up more air units. So both players are becoming a bit more even on economy. So you 6LC, 4QP for both of them, actually. Yeah, both of them will have exactly that. Or sorry, no, 5LC for Cron Aberrant. So Cron Aberrant getting a 6th LCRP, but he's still later than Ferreter. So Ferreter has had an economic advantage for far longer. But he's not building any far pods yet. He likely will now. He has the money for it. Just as soon as he gets the Chrono Energy for it, he'll be building one, I'm sure. And there we go. There's that Faropod. Sepipod still scouting around, double-checking that Cronamert has not expanded out even further. And Cronamert has an Octopod basically doing the same thing, but much slower. So both players double-checking where their opponents are once they figure out where they are confidently. I expect an attack will happen, so by the 9-minute mark, I expect there will be an attack. And here goes the 7th seventh, seventh LCRP for Cron Aberrant. So Cron Aberrant now trying to get himself back up in economy. He will still be a while before he's really in a good position economically. But Cron Aberrant doing his best, getting more RPs. He will be able to out... He's overtaking Ferreter now in terms of number of RPs. But he's not yet in terms of the amount of resources that have been gathered thus far. So really, at this point, it's a matter of Ferreter losing his army... If Ferreter loses the army he has built up, which is where his economy has been invested, then it's going to be a major loss. But if he doesn't, if he keeps them going and he uses them wisely, then Ferreter will win this. And then we'll go on to another best of three. And once that and then that best of three, if that happens, will be quite long as well. But it looks like the heavy bot has managed to get rid of the Scouting Octopod that Ferreter had, but really that's a bad idea. That Scouting Octopod, it's fine if it's running around the map, it's not a big deal. Especially when all these Octopods and Octos are patrolling Ferreter's main base. It's not going to be going for any assault anytime soon. And Cron Everett, on the other hand, has a dome up, has a second pod coming up as well. Ferreter really not taking advantage of the economy he has. He's... Oh, he's getting weaponry. Why is he getting weaponry? I mean, okay, I guess against this, a Plasma Cruise Missile would actually not be half bad, but they're expensive. They're they're super expensive. The amount of money he'd spend on that, he could easily get a couple of paws and just tear this apart the old-fashioned way. Now, Chrono Bombs I could see, but Chrono Bombs require Chrono Porting as well, and that's difficult to work with. Anyway, the Pod will be able to heal up, getting rid of the Octopod and healing itself up all in the Unplayable Pass, so there's nothing that Chrono Ever can do before getting Chrono Porting, and I don't think he's going to, though he is stockpiling a lot of resources Probably going to use that for a Faropod. If he doesn't, then I'd be very surprised he does not have the unit base. No, legal class. Interesting. But he does not have the unit base to deal with this, so he's probably going to go for Octoligo from here. Getting Sepipod with Faropod, and then building up Octoligos to assault Ferreter's main base, pretty much from a proxy duo, or, yeah, proxy pod class duo. Ferreter, on the other hand, really just needs to build himself up, build Sepipods, build Faropods. He has weaponry, and he's clearly waiting for the money to build a PCM. And he is... Yeah, that's what he's waiting for, because Plasma Cruise Missiles are... Well, Plasma Bomb is listed. 200 QP he needs, as well as 200 LC. Like I said, that is that is two Faropods. And two Faropods would go a long way at this stage in the game. This isn't the stage of the game where two Faropods are just going to get torn apart by an army of Sepi Pods. It's... It's not that stage of the game yet. I don't see the point of having weaponry quite yet. I think Crown Armor has a much wiser strategy getting... Legal class early on, though he isn't spending it either. And Ferreter... Now he has the money for it. Probably going to be using a Plasma Cruise Missile anytime now. Getting the Sepipod into the natural expansion to scout out for the bomb. And... There's Sepipod now. Double checking what's around here. I expect the Plasma, the plasma Missile will be sent anytime. Now he knows what's there. Now he knows all the defenses that are around here. And Chrono Porting being built, being built by Chrono Aberrant, like I said, I do not agree with this idea. I do not agree with this. He does not have the units to support using Chrono Porting quite yet. Though he does have the re resources to build up a fair amount of units, but he doesn't have the units themselves. And Farapod coming around here, around the back, destroying RPs that Chrono Aberrant has. This is in the unplayable pass, by the way. 
So Cronhammer might be able to Chronobor back and defend that. But losing that Reef as well, losing a lot of units. The Faro going down now, the only detector around here. The Archgus is not close enough to detect to help deal with the Faro pod right now. So Ferreter able to tear apart that base in the back as well as... Well, he has Plasma Cruise Missiles if he wants to use them, but I think he's getting Chrono Porting from here. No, he did use Plasma Cruise Missiles, getting rid of many of the RPs. He looks like he killed his own Seppi Pod in the process, but still getting rid of most of the RPs, heavily damaging the rest of them, and getting rid of the Dome as well. Yes, he did kill his own Seppi Pod, but getting rid of most of the RPs, but not quite killing all of them. A Far Pod for support would be perfect, but he can't easily change the path for that. And Ferreter... Like I said, getting rid of this expansion in the backyard. I think Ferreter has this game in the bag. Cronaberant doesn't even have the reef. For Where did Chronoporting come? I think the reef may have been destroyed that was building Chronoporting. He does have Lego class. He looks to be building Faro Legos, not Octoligos. He does have what he needs to build those if he wants to. And here comes two Faro Legos. No specials though, so it's pretty much just going to be purely ground assault. And right now, Ferreter is also going... 13 Minute Mark, he is going for a direct assault with Octopods and Octos while sending a hidden expansion force to the top left in case he doesn't manage to make this work. But still, that was a lot of damage dealt to these RPs. And these reefs are burning through their energy in no time to, to heal it all up, though they still have plenty left in case they need it. But now this Farpod, having torn apart Crown Amber's attempt at economic advantage, Ferreter's only real weakness right now is his RPs have to move, but... Even with that, the Autobots doing what they can, but will not be able to take out no, the Faro Legos quickly enough. From the looks of it, one of them may, one of the Faro Legos might die, but no, not, both of them are going to survive. The Octopods are going down. And the Faro Pod has also been destroyed in the backyard, so Ferreter losing this Faro Pod needs to go back and save it before these Faros come in and deal with it. And needs to move it out of the way right now. I'm not sure why he isn't doing so. He has the Chrono Energy to do so. And no, that Faro Pod going down, he's... Bookmark this location, however. Not sure if he's planning on firing off another missile, or if he's just planning on... Well, he might be. It wouldn't be a terribly bad idea. And yes, he is actually trying to fire off another missile to kill off the Faro Legos. And there it goes! The missile will be hitting just in time to kill those Faro Legos as they're being built from the looks of it. But I could be off of it. It's hard to say with... When that was fired. If that was fired. I don't see it in the timeline at all. Oh, I see. Ferret just skipped, skipped the propagation, so it's going to hit in the unplayable pass. It propagated around here, where it actually departed. So these Faro Legos are as good as dead from the looks of it, getting killed before they're even built. Same with the Faros that destroy the Faro pod over here. Once the blue time comes along, we will see what happens, but this is going to happen very deep in the unplayable pass. Carnivorant, having not gotten Chrono Boarding, ultimately losing it, I guess that reef that he had was destroyed that had it before. So this green time up here is going to be the one actually carrying over the arrival of the Plasma Cruise Missile. Crownhammer not aware of what's going on quite yet. And Ferreter having a very secure position in his base. I guess this is one game where Plasma Bomb actually paid off. Assuming that Ferreter wins, but the way he's used it thus far, it's actually been quite wise. It's worked out pretty well, and especially with jumping away from where it's going to depart so it doesn't actually show it off. Yeah, Crownhammer... Looks like his main base is going to be going, or his, well, new main is going to be going down, especially being so clustered like it is. And Crime are building a bunch of domes just in case the Plasma Cruise Missile were to hit. Unfortunately for him, the Plasma Cruise Missile has already hit. Well, in the Unplayable Pass, the 14 minute mark, and we're looking at the 16 minute mark. So that Plasma Cruise Missile has hit right here, 14 19 or so. And I expect Crime will be looking at that very shortly. Especially once he sees that everything he's done has started being undone. Yes, those Faro Legos are gone. Those Faro Legos were destroyed. It's very hard to see, but they just got blown up at the last minute. And now the Octopods and Octos are able to come through and destroy everything that was here. Crimer losing his entire natural expansion before it even was built. Trying to do what he can with Faro Legos that no longer exist, though. And since they no longer exist, that's clearly going to be futile. But still, trying to do what he can to mitigate whatever, but like I said, this was an edge attack. Edge attack, very cleverly done to avoid detection. Cronaveron has lost this game and lost this best of three, but he still has another chance. He still has one more chance if he wants to get through this and win the tournament. So it's not over yet, but both players in the next game, the next series, will be on the edge of their seat. If either player loses, that's it. So after this is going to be a best of three, and... 
Faraday versus Crown Admiral once again. Whoever wins, wins the tournament. Whoever loses is out completely second place. Though it's still pretty respectable. And... <laughs> Crown trying to do what he can. Trying to get Crown in the future. Valiant effort, but I don't see this actually working out. Trying to Crown back what he can. Probably to rebuild this base or rebuild something. Because, as we can see, after the green time wave, Crown Abbott has this Arcticus, and that's about it. He has nothing else on the map. But I don't see Crown Abbott managing to pull this off. I mean, Crown Abbott might be done in time. And you might be able to get... Looks like this set... Be, well, these two Faros, actually, are what he wants to use. But this is not going to work. By the time it's done, he'll at best produce a Paradox. But even with that, I think it's done. Crown Abbott surrendering, realizing he can't do anything with this. Surrenders, and that is the first series. Wow, okay, that was... That was intense. Crimer... So Ferreter wins the first finals. We will be having, of course, thus a second finals. Because having only one will be a little bit awkward since this is double elimination. So Crimer having his first elimination. But now it's going to go on to the second, the absolute finals. The final finals, and with that will be the entire tournament. So stay tuned, I'll be coming back shortly to bring that. And just see you then.